Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black dragon's deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Rivas of the Claw as our commander, a 3-mana 3-3 three three Vyoshino Warlock, so not a dragon itself. It has manas, and it can tap to add 2 mana in any combination of colors that we can only spend to cast dragon creature spells, and then once during each of our turns we may cast a dragon creature spell from our graveyard, so Rivas can generate quite a bit of card advantage, but then if we cast a dragon that way it will get exiled if it dies so we can't keep looping back the same dragon, which would be a bit too powerful. So our deck has a ton of powerful dragons of course, and also a few looting effects so we can discard some dragons in the early game, since late game we can still get them back with Rivas, that way we sort of generate a bit of card advantage and we get to see more different dragons throughout the game. So first off let's take a look at our actual dragons. We've got Shivan Devastator from Dominaria, can be played at any point in our curve with Flying and Haste. At 2 mana, Reckless Barbarian can be sacrificed for 2 mana, giving us a nice mana boost and great synergy with Rivas as we can later replay it out of the graveyard. Fearsome Whelp can keep giving our dragons in hand a 1 mana discount if it sticks around. And then of course at 3 mana we're playing Rivas most of the time. And at 4 there's a Blazing Sky which can provide a bit of value when it dies. Opportunistic Dragon can steal an opposing human or artifact and gain control of it, removing all of its abilities. Thunderbreak will punish the opponent for targeting our dragons, dealing 3 damage to them. We've got Town Racer Tyrant to target an opposing land that will deal damage to the opponent unless they sacrifice it. Bladewing can be kicked in the late game to make an extra dragon token, and the Predator can gain Indestructible by potentially sacrificing another creature, and can also exile cards from graveyards while gaining additional counters. Then at 5 mana, Midnight Sky, a 5-5 with Flying and Menace, that when it dies will make the opponent discard 2 cards and lose 2 life, as we're not able to get back a dragon with its ability sadly. There is a gold span, still very powerful despite the nerf, making treasure tokens to help us ramp out our dragons. There is a Demanding Dragon, which will deal 5 damage to the opponent unless they sacrifice a creature. Glorybringer can deal 4 damage to a non-dragon every other turn, thanks to Exert. We've got Skargon Hellkite, enters with either a plus one counter or haste, thanks to Riot, and we can potentially use the activated ability if we chose a plus one counter to deal additional damage. Terror of the Peaks will deal damage when a creature enters a battlefield under our control, equal to its power, and can target anything. We've got a Wrathful Red Dragon, punishing the opponent for dealing damage to our dragons. And then at six, there's Ancient Copper Dragon, can make a ton of treasure if it manages to hit the opponent. Inferno is a 6-6 with flying and haste that cannot be countered and also has fire breathing so we can increase its power. Then a Lathless makes additional dragon tokens whenever another non-token dragon enters under our control. We've got Ancient Brass Dragon which can reanimate cards from the graveyard if it connects. We've got a Dragon Mage which will make each player discard their hand and draw 7, so that's another neat way to get additional cards in the graveyard for Rivas to bring back, can be a lot of fun. Then we've got Terror of Mount Velos, giving our team double strike when it enters. A Dracoseth is incredibly powerful if it gets to attack, essentially splitting up 10 damage across 3 targets. And Bladewing the Risen can reanimate a dragon when it enters a battlefield, and for a black and a red we can give our dragons plus one plus one until end of turn. Now let's take a look at our non-dragon cards, and I've divided them into a few different categories, starting out with our looting effect. We've got the 1 mana Faithless Looting to draw to discard 2, can be flashed back. Then Cathartic Reunion at 2 mana, alongside Thrill of Possibility and Tormenting Voice. And then the big 4 mana discard effect that also make 2 treasure tokens in the process, Big Score being the best one. And then a Pirate Spillage, a Sorcery, and Unexpected Windfall, Double Red, all for the same effect. Then we take a look at our removal spells, where we have a Lightning Bolt at 1 mana, and then a bunch of black removal with Feed the Swarm that can also take out enchantments, Heartless Act, Infernal Grasp, and Power Word Kill. Could also play Doomblade, because if we are up against Mono Black, we can always discard it with our various looting effects, so it's not a disaster. Then we've got a Braid, can deal 3 damage or destroy an artifact. Dragon's Fire can potentially deal more damage if we control or reveal a big dragon. We've got Breath Weapon, dealing 2 to each non-dragon, so it can be a nice sweeper. Spit Flame deals 4 and can be brought back from our graveyard. Call Against Command, another answer to artifacts, can also bring back creatures from the graveyard or make the opponent discard in addition to dealing 2 damage. 
and Elder Dragon War from Dominaria can be quite versatile, dealing 2 damage to each creature, can also discard our hand if we start from chapter 2, and eventually makes a 4-4 dragon token, and Crux of Fate, one of the best cards in the deck, as potentially a one-sided sweeper. It does potentially kill Rivas, which is not a dragon, but destroying each non-dragon creature in play can often be a game winner. And then we've got additional mana acceleration, with at 2 mana Dragonlord Servant, giving our dragons a 1 mana discount, Orb of Dragonkind can help us cast our dragons and later be sacrificed to find a dragon in the top 7 cards of our library. Then we've got Arcane Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone as 2 mana, a ramp artifact. And at 3 mana we've got another Orb of Dragonkind, this time also giving our creature haste if we use the mana to cast it, which can make a big difference, especially on some of our bigger dragons like Drunkuseth. And then the Dragon Speaker Shaman at 3 mana, similar to the Servant, now gives us a 2 mana discount on all our dragons, so very similar to Rivas. And then a Sarkon Fireblood can also make 2 mana to help cast our dragons, can also use it to loot, so it has great overlap with our looting effects. And then a Dragon Sword can provide card advantage by removing gold counters from it, which we receive after a dragon enters under our control, and also just a nice ramp artifact. And Hazareth's Monument is also great, as it will give our red creatures a discount, most of our dragons are red, and then whenever we cast a creature spell we can discard a card if we do draw a card, so we can put additional dragons in our graveyard to maybe get back with Rivas. And then we've got some additional card draw engines with Black Market Connections and Frexen Arena. Fable of the Mirror Breaker has a ton of great utility, making additional treasure tokens with the Shaman, eventually maybe copying some of our non-legendary dragons with Reflection, and a Sarkon, a Wanderer to Shiv, can also give our dragons in hand a discount, maybe conjure up Shivan dragons in hand, or deal 3 damage. And then finally, one Bond of Revival. We could play more actual reanimation effect, but Bond of Revival is one of the best ones, as it also gives our dragon haste so it can attack right away, and for the most part we're happy just casting dragons out of our graveyard with Rivas and playing a grindier game. And then taking a look at our lands, nothing too special, that's noteworthy, just uh, a lot of mana fixing, the Enclave can draw extra cards in the late game, and then we've got Abandoned Mire, can also potentially get something back from the graveyard, and Crucible to make some 1-1s. One so yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Lagrella, so can remove one of our creatures when it enters. But yeah, we've got a Dragon's Fire, turn 3 Rivas, couple Dragons, seems solid. And we'll scry Mindstone, seems worth keeping since we can play turn 2, don't expect to Dragon's Fire anything just yet. Although they might have a mana creature, nope, just their own Mindstone. It's only fair. Now ideally we could play Rivas and keep up removal, so if they do play their commander we can maybe kill it in their turn so Rivas doesn't suffer from summoning sickness. Rejuvenator finds a land and has read some monuments. So don't quite have the mana to play monuments and anything else afterwards. So Rivas it is. They will probably exile their Rejuvenator and Rivas. So that if we kill Lagrella, they also get additional Rejuvenator value. So that feels kind of bad. So maybe I should just play Monuments. And then... Next turn we can play Rivas, keep up removal. Opponent ramps even more now. And a Guardian Project for card advantage. Okay. So sometimes you can prevent a card draw from a project by killing the creature in response to the trigger, because then it's going to be in the graveyard. It doesn't quite work with commanders, since those go back to the command zone. So we won't be able to deny the card draw. But if we kill Lagrella, then at least we get to maybe untap with the Rivas to use its mana. Although at this point we might just want to kind of ignore Rivas. This can kill one of their ramp artifacts, doesn't really accomplish much at this point. This is a 2-3, so also dies to a braid. So we'll probably start here. And discard one of our dragons that we can replay out of our graveyard for value next turn. And Hellkite maybe, the pick. So we can still keep up removal alongside it, a land is good. Alright, so our plan is to keep Rivas around. Although, 
Even if it doesn't tap for mana, it could still use its ability. I will kill the reef in response to the trigger, so Guardian Project at least doesn't draw. And then if they want to exile Rivas with their commander, so be it. Can still kill it next turn, and then cast Hellkite, potentially. We'll keep Rivas exiled. So if we kill Lagrella, then I'm going to be a mana short of casting Hellkite out of the graveyard. So, I guess we can kill Lagrella in the opponent's turn, and for now just cast like a Predator. So we don't give up any value necessarily. And then for now maybe discard Inferno and keep Bladewing. So they've got a lot of mana and a Timeless Witness to get back a Risen Reef. That's also a lot of value. Okay, that happens. Guardian Project draws. And I don't think I'm killing Risen Reef in response again, since we want to free up our commander. Jewel Thief will draw as well. Okay. All these ETB effects, of course, will trigger again once they exile their stuff with Lagrella. So we're pretty far behind. but at least we get to have our turn with Rivas. Okay. Exiling Timeless Witness with Predator would also be tempting. I think I need to keep Grasp to answer their commander once again. And then for now, replay maybe Hellkite from the graveyard so we can use its ability to ping down their smaller creatures. Can I play a Horde first? That would leave me with enough mana to still play Grasp. So, sure. Play Hellkind using Rivaz's ability. And discard Bladewing. Generate more value. And we'll choose a plus one counter here. Predator attacks. Gets rid of Hideout. And then we still have an Infernal Grasp to potentially kill Lagrella before it manages to exile more stuff. Opponent does have a lot of mana and a lot of cards. Teleportation Circle, yep, that's a good one. And Lagrella. Okay, so we'll see what they try and target. And then in response, we'll grasp. Guardian Project still draws. Fairy Seer gets this cry and draw. Can use the Hellkai to kill some of the low toughness creatures. And then the Predator can exile them, so the Witness can get them back. Thassa can flicker stuff too. Alright. So our opponent's got all their engines online, we just need to try and kill them with our flyers before they outvalue us too much. But Thassa can also tap our dragons down, so it's gonna be rough. 
And this Guardian project has drawn them at least five or six cards now. So definitely the card that's making the biggest impact. Alrighty, so play Inferno. See what we pick up, or maybe draw with a Horde first. I guess we'll uh, play Inferno first and then see what we loot with Monuments. Since again, I might want to use Hellkites. Abandonmire. Yeah, I think Hellkite kills Fairy Seer and Risen Reef. So they can trump. And smash. Exiling Risen Reef. Bones at six. And we can draw end of turn with a Dragon Sword. Could have also pumped Inferno for one. But now the big turn for our opponents. They get to untap with a ton of mana. And a lot of cards in hand as well. Exquisite Blade can gain them some life. Well, at least we got some nice value of our commander this game. Playing all those dragons from the graveyard, Soul Warden for more life gain. Don't think the life gain's necessarily going to be enough, but uh, it's a start, I guess. They're also just drawing for one mana. Gets back Fairy Seer. There's Lagrella. Steals Inferno and Rejuvenator. Okay. And then they can still flicker end of turn with Teleportation Circle and Thassa. Uro for more life. Alright, so they're almost tapped out. Fairy Seer once again. And then Jewel Thief might as well attack, has Vigilance, opponent too busy making sure they don't die. Thassa goes for Lagrella. And Teleportation Circle for Exquisite Blade. Drunkoseth would be nice, although lacks haste. So opponents all the way back up to 17. And then there's still one more trigger here to resolve. At least Dragon's Horde triggers as well, so we get an extra counter. Okay, so opponent back up to 20. Draws a bunch of cards, and then Inferno gone. Alright, let's untap. Probably need a big haste creature here to have a chance. We can kill Fairy Seer with Hellkites, but then we're still a couple points short. Opponent discarding to hand size a bunch, and hello, haste enabler. Orb of a dragon kind. Don't mind if I do. And then do we have mana to play Drunkoseth afterwards? Sure, sounds like it. Play Drunkoseth. With haste, no less. Opponent gains some life, and then we just move to combats. And our opponent explodes, yeah, kill Fairy Seer with one of the triggers, four more to their face, and that should be lethal. Wow, what a top deck. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the play, facing Tiamat, five color dragons. And what do we think of our opener? A lightning bolt may not be the best in this matchup, but we can discard it with thrill. So I'll try it. No reason not to keep a bolt, but highly doubt our opponent's gonna present a target, turn one. And then we can wait to thrill since it's an instant. It would be better value to discard a dragon and later replay it with Rivas. Opponent foretells. Uh, what could this be? Well, it could be anything since our opponent five colors. Yeah, maybe I should discard a dragon here. I'll keep the Ancient Brass Dragon as it can actually reanimate something too. And then maybe Thunderbreak Regent. Did not hit a land drop here, that's painful. Well, let's Reunion and then now probably let go of Bolts. And uh, I guess Ancient Brass Dragon's nice to discard so we can reanimate it with Bond of Revival. Alright, so it's not going to be Rivas ramping into our dragons, but Bond of Revival. Maybe reanimating one. We'll follow Haven. Opponent passes. And we can play a Dragon's Horde. And play an Orb. So now the Horde can also provide a bit of card advantage. Right, hopefully they tap out so we can... Bond of Revival back our dragon. Path to the festival for ramp, so they're getting closer to casting Tiamat. They still have blue mana up, which could represent a counter spell that they foretold. Could just be an Alrun's Epiphany. It's hard to say for sure. I think we need to give Bond of Revival a try, although they could also have removal up. So maybe go for Midnight Sky. Three, four, five, six, seven. Although next turn I can play Tiamat, which can just block our Ancient Brass Dragon. Although I do have a Heartless Act. So if I keep up Heartless Acts, I can afford to play something else maybe. How about a Midnight Sky using our orb? And then I can still kill Tiamat and then untap and uh, sort of combo off. And if they don't play Tiamat, I can still draw with a Horde at least. So Midnight Sky resolved. No immediate answers. Is it time for Tiamat? Nope, it's gonna be flashed back path to the festivities, keeping up green and white this time. All right, so we can draw with a horde. And now is the time for Bond of Revival. It is tempting, although opponent could also have sweepers in hand, like Doomscar maybe in exile. So it's hard to say for sure. Bond of Revival getting back our Ancient Brass Dragon would be a good way to recover from a sweeper, admittedly. So maybe I should still be patient and go for maybe a Wrathful... Red Dragon using Orb. And still keep up Heartless Acts, plus Horde once again. Although now I could have also tried to play Rivas, since I would still have the mana to next turn Heartless Acts and Bond of Revival to clear a blocker. Is it finally Tiamat time? Nope, Mirari's Wake to double their mana. And then now a Doomscar like we suspected. That happens. And then we'll make the opponent discard too. Sadly can't reanimate our dragons with a Midnight Sky, a bit of a nombo. But discard to lose to still quite powerful. And they had a Supreme Verdict and Root, so plenty of ramp. And now Perforos to give 
Tiamat Haste. And uh, with Mirari's Wake, they can certainly combo off next turn. So that's scary. But we get to make our move now. Power Word Kill, very awkward in the matchup, so we'll be discarded to Windfall. Uh, let's see, if I Bond of Revival, keep up Heartless Act, that seems like the place I don't have time for Windfall. So yeah, let's get back Ancient Brass Dragon. Attack. Alright, we rolled a natural one, so won't be getting anything back here, sadly. Not gonna cast looting right now. Alright, so Tiamat plus at least one other dragon, probably two. Nope, Ancient Copper Dragon with haste. Thanks to Perforos, so is that what we need to kill now? And a Tiamat. Three mana left. So yeah, we probably kill the Ancient Copper Dragon, but we'll wait and see if our opponent attacks, because they might keep Tiamat back on defense to block Ancient Brass Dragon. Alright, luckily they attacked with both, so now I can kill the Copper Dragon and just take eight. Ooh, and a Shivan Devastator of the top should win the game here. X equals eight. Don't get to find out what we roll with our Brass Dragon this time, as our opponent's already dead. But uh, yeah, at least we get to roll a d20 once here, getting a natural one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Joda, the Unifier, five color legends. This hand actually has some of the best tools available with Crux of Fate as a board wipe. Now sadly, only have two lands, no red, so we won't be able to use Sarkon to find more lands. And it's going to be two lands until we get to Pirate Spillage. So it's pretty risky. We do have a Power Word kill to kind of bridge the gap. And we're pretty likely to find at least a red source in two or three draws. So we can play Rivas. Yeah, I'll try it based on the Crux of Fate. Possible we can also just outrace our opponent in the air and we don't need a powerful sweeper to catch us back up. But uh, seems like one of the better tools in the matchup. Alright, there's our red mana, perfect. Turn 2 Power Word Kill, ideally turn 3 Sarkon, but Rivas is uh, pretty much the same. The drawback of Rivas is that it might die to our own Crux of Fate, where Sarkon does not. Their opponent's got their mana sorted here, just missing red. Stomping Ground untapped for Uro. Not gonna kill that one. Uro, of course, a great card, although it doesn't stick around necessarily to get the advantage from Joda. So we'll play that over Rivas. And we'll loot. And what do we get rid of? Predators, since we can maybe play it out of the graveyard. Although it's also a way of exiling Uro if we played next turn already. Although they're more likely to play Joda, in which case I'll Power Word kill, and then I guess Sarkhan could still cast Predator. So maybe actually hang on to it and get rid of Pillage, which Sarkhan basically does the same. Do we see Joda? Opponent's got the mana for it. Nope, Arcane Signet. Plus Nemata. Yeah, that's a pretty annoying card too. Now, we could kill it, and then still have our Crux of Fate to answer Joda. It seems like a good turn. Alternatively, we can play Connections, but that's my entire turn gone. If they play Joda, I guess this would get plus two plus two, so then they could kill Sarkon. So maybe we want to avoid that. So we'll stick to our original plan of using Power Word Kill. Could also go for Servant now instead, but this seems safer. Look to the skies. Mm. 
And then Predator can exile Uru next turn if we attack. There's Judah. And a Wrathful Red Dragon. Okay, so we could Crux of Fate just for Judah. Um, or we can let them sort of combo off for a turn. Hopefully no haste creatures and then next turn wipe the board. Can chum block with the servants um, to protect Sarkon. And then play our Wrathful Red Dragon as well. Kind of like that idea. And Uro is finally gone. Okay, pass it back. And Joda theoretically also has a hard time attacking into our Wrathful Red Dragon, since that would represent a lot of damage to their face. Arvads cascades into Moxamber, so they got a bit unlucky there, hitting the zero mana, a legendary card. And a Cumball. Okay. What else do they hit? Amara. So now Crux of Fates. Destroying all non-dragons. Should be quite effective. Opponent just going face. Still fine to jump with the Servant, which is gonna die to Crux of Fate anyway. And uh, I guess we can activate Predator, not that it matters. Alrighty, and then Sarkon's also close to ultimating. And uh, can't really do anything else this turn. So Crux of Fates on destroy all non-dragon creatures. Attack. And we get to exile something else with Predator. And then Sarkon could loot away Opportunistic Dragon, which is not all that impactful at this point. Exile Nemata, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, the Crux of Fate paid off. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first Sliver. So it could be Sliver Tribal. And um, yeah, hopefully Riva survives and we get to play some of our 5 drops ahead of schedule. Call against command could maybe take out a ramp artifact. And the Elder Dragon War could also be an effective sweeper if they're playing a bunch of small slivers. They could also be a Tybalt's Trickery combo deck. We're about to find out. Abundant Harvest, Finding the Kami War. Not something I associate with Sliver Tribal, so it could also just be 5 color good stuff. Well, I think we still go for Harivas. And then next turn maybe play a Copper Dragon if we get to untap. Realmwalker? Okay, never mind, our opponent is Sliver Tribal. And yeah, Copper Dragon has the highest upside. Rivas, not a dragon itself, so would die to Crux of Fate, naming non-dragon. And also wouldn't be able to get rid of Realmwalker since it's a changeling, which means it's also a dragon that wouldn't die to Crux of Fate. For now a Cleaving Sliver, and we get to attack with our Copper Dragon, I can't believe it. So, see which number we roll first here. Four. Could have been better, but I'll take it. And then how about a Terror of the Peaks, followed by a Midnight Sky. Five damage. Take out Realmwalker, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with an exciting hand. Facing old stick fingers, so they might be going with a Cultivator Colossus Reanimator combo. In which case, we don't have a clean answer to it. But Arcane Signet's a good draw. 
Can maybe play connections before playing Rivas to try and draw into a removal spell. For now, play Signets. And then the combo of Shaman plus Rivas could easily let us cast Dracoseth as well. But that may not be enough. Right, Toll of the Invasion instead for this card. Could go with the connections if they're afraid of us drawing into a removal spell. Alright, connection's gone. So now I can play probably just Rivas. And a tapped crossroads to scry. Don't need more land. So time for old stick fingers. Putting two big creatures in the graveyard. Nope, binding, killing Rivas. So our opponent's more of a fair stick fingers deck, perhaps. And Rivas can go back to the command zone. So now we can efficiently double spell Shaman plus Thunderbreak Regents. And next turn, hopefully, Dracoseth. Devastator is also pretty good with uh, Shaman, getting a 2 mana discount. Binding would have been a pretty clean answer to connections as well. So maybe they drew it afterwards, feed the swarm, kills Shaman. Three cards left in hand. And a pass summoning just to make some 1-1s. One that's fine. Okay, so do we replay a Rivas? Next turn I can cast Dracoseth anyways, so maybe going for Devastator here is better. X equals 5. Hit the opponent for 9 in the air. And the damage from Regent could also add up if they try and kill our stuff one by one. Spider Queen can make some spiders, that helps. Darkness will swallow I will cull the weak. Well, let's hope they don't have an answer to Dracoseth, because that would be an easy way to deal with Spider Queen. For now, probably don't want to trade Regent for two spiders. Although it would mean if we send both at Spider Queen that she would die. Um, let's play Dracoseth. Think just Devastator going at Spider Queen. They can jump with a spider. And so be it. Alright, they let Spider Queen go. That's surprising. So they value the spider more than an extra card. Maybe they have a blood on the snow and they're gonna get her back. Although they only have three snow lands. So it's gonna be old stick fingers. And yeah, the creatures they have are quite scary. But we get to untap, and if we get to attack here, opponent should be dead. 4, 3, 3. Clear the spiders. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Yarok with the Desecrated. Enters the battlefield to deck. And our hand's promising, assuming Rivas survives. But they might have some early removal here. Turn to Idol. And then turn 3 Rivans, could also play Varix now instead. But the upside is a lot higher if we can Rivans and then maybe ramp into a Wrathful Dragon. Now we could potentially play an Ancient Copper Dragon next turn, which can also generate a ton of treasure. Manglehorn takes out Guardian Idol. Okay, so we'll need a land for a Copper Dragon. Which we found. Alright, let's give that a try. 
I stop side if we can connect with it. And would love to roll a d20. Don't get to do it very often. Alright, tap lines. And a Spring Bloom Druid. So we get to attack with our Copper Dragon. Doesn't happen every day. We'll go through it as quickly as possible before our opponent concedes. I know we just drew a Goldspan Dragon, but let's see what we roll first. A 6. Alright, could have been better, could have been worse. I do enter tapped. Uh, I guess we want to play our Wrathful Red Dragon here to punish any removal spells. And then next turn we can play Goldspan so our treasures make double mana. Maybe Ancient Brass Dragon can also help us get back anything that dies. Opponent can play Yarok this turn, but they will be facing a lot of damage in the air. It's gonna be a Cloudkin Seer to Chum Block instead. So that's probably jumping in front of our Copper Dragon. And a Glass Pool Mimic to copy Cloudkin, presumably. Manglehorn, the reason why our treasures come into play tapped, since normally they're untapped. So opponent's copying the Spring Bloom for ramp instead, so they might be setting up for a powerful play next turn. Well, we'll make the most out of it and play Goldspan, and then probably leave Red Mana untapped. Send the team. Opponent just takes it. How many more treasures can we generate? Three. Could be a River's Rebuke incoming for all we know. Um, I guess Demanding Dragon can make them sacrifice. And then, I guess, an Ancient Brass Dragon. If they Reverse Rebuke, they're gonna bounce my treasures anyway. Possible they have a different Sweeper instead, and I want to keep my treasure. Can see that argument as well. So we'll just pass. Alright, and our opponent did not have any answers, and explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Catilda. Green white humans and our hands acceptable. Looting can maybe discard Dracoseth so we can later replay it with Rivas while finding more relevant, cheaper plays. And then we've got the Dragon's Fire to answer Catilda. So Dracoseth can go and Inferno can probably go as well. Just keep as many lands and other spells as possible. So, not gonna mess around, just kill Catilda. And next turn play Rivas, which a green-white human stack typically doesn't have a ton of answers to. Ooh, Sun Gold Sentinel actually giving the opponent some graveyard hate here. That's rough. So, punished for discarding our dragons. Well, at least we can cast a Glorybringer next turn to take it out, but not before they exile another dragon here, presumably. We'll still have our Faithless looting to flashback. Possible they have a protection spell since they kept priority with the green mana. For now a Growing Rites. Yeah, it does feel like they have maybe a one mana Hexproof trick in hand. In which case, exerting Glorybringer would not be the most beneficial move. Don't have the mana to flashback looting and cast Predator right now. I guess we can Windfall, discard Predator, and then cast Predator this turn. And uh, kind of play around a protection spell. And then next turn, give uh, Glorybringer a try. It's 
sentinel attacks to exile faithful looting. I think I'm down to block with predator and sacrifice Rivas. Since we can just hard cast our five drops now anyway. There's the heroic intervention. Not quite the one mana trick I was expecting. And a torrent, alright. So we get to untap with the glory bringer exerts, and then at this point, torrents is probably a bigger threat than sentinel, as our uh, graveyard's already been pillaged. And then exert on torrents, exile intervention, and our opponent concedes. About to take nine damage. Got another dragon coming up. And then maybe the Abandoned Mire can also generate a bit of value onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Soul of Wind Grace, Junt, and uh, our hand seems promising. Turn to Fearsome Whelp can lead to some powerful starts. Opponent's got to fetch land to synergize with our commander to get immediate value. Play a Whelp, can hit for one. And then it needs to survive to give us a discount. Lotus Cobra. Yeah, Lotus Cobra might be worth killing here, as opposed to playing Rivas, since we're already getting a discount from Fearsome Whelp anyways. And then I might actually want to play Enclave in case our opponent's playing Land Destruction, since I kind of need the double red to cast my dragons. And then a braid over Infernal Grasp, kills Cobra, hit for one. And maybe next turn we can play some cheap dragons. Rex and Arena for card draw. And so yeah, we can play an Inferno and Smash. And then next turn if we get another one mana discount, maybe Wrathful Dragon plus Rivas. Seems more mana efficient. Opponent at 17, gonna go down to 16 if they just tap out for Soul of Wind Grace. They're in trouble. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, the power of turn 2 Whelp, backed up by some removal for Cobra. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a 5 color Shrines deck. Our hands got a lot of removal that doesn't necessarily do much in the matchup, so I think this is a mulligan. This uh, doesn't have much interaction. But uh, I guess we can cast a pretty big Devastator here. So I'll try it and then hopefully find some more useful cards along the way. Turn 2 Servants, turn 3 Rivas. Play a pretty large Devastator. And then we can discard Dragons to also reanimate with Bond. Sanctum Weavers carry. Probably could have gotten away with uh, an attack for one before playing Rivas. Well, uh, Lathless is actually a good draw. Can play that before Devastator. All their opponents will be able to make a lot of mana with Sanctum Weaver. Haven. So they have four mana here. Could play their commander. It's gonna be a Chromatic Lantern instead. Still two mana left. And a Canvas Transformation on Rivals. Ouch. Okay, so no Dragon Queen this turn. Devastator's pretty small, so maybe a Reunion discard Dragon Queen to then bring back with Bond. Okay, can looting, although probably happy with my hands. So our opponent's got a Pretty massive man advantage now. Gonna be a Skyclave a Relic with Kicker to make even more mana. And a Cold Steel Heart. Well, if their hands all mana, no action, I guess we could get there. 
Power Word Kill deals with Sanctum Weaver. Question is, is her opponent holding a sweeper? I think Bond of Revival still probably the play. Bring back a hasty Lathalus. Smack him for 10. And then have a hasty Inferno left over. Alongside Devastator too. Sigil can make angels. Companion will kick them off. Alright, that's one way they can uh, keep up with Laughless. And an Ancient Wars. Okay, three angels already. And four damage upstairs. Power War Kill does not kill angels, as you may know. Second Plane Inferno, make a token. And then do we attack? If I attack with Lathless and Inferno, they double block Lathless, probably Chump Inferno. Yeah, I mean, that seems fine. Right, they're gonna chump. Still have a 6-6 six, six flyer and a 5-5. Five, five. And we can add a 5-5 five, five devastator to the mix. Just need them to stop playing enchantments. One card left in hand. It's a Curse of Silence. It's a third angel. And our opponent names our commander. The Ancient Wars slowly killing us. I say slowly, six a turn, it's pretty fast. Alrighty, so if I fetch, play a 6-6 six, six Devastator, what happens? Attack with all. They can double block Inferno. And uh, chump Devastator, take five. It's probably our best bet here. And then need them not to top deck another enchantment. Going going for triple chump. Staying at 9, maybe hoping to top deck a sweeper. Are we dead to an all out attack? I don't think so. These are summoning sick. 6 to the face. And a wrathful red dragon we can cast. Just in case. And smash. Just need to dodge a silver wreckage. Fairy's Protection, okay. That actually works. Keeps him alive. So, I guess Rivaz is unlocked again, weirdly enough, because uh, Kenra's Transformation phased out. I guess we'll have to kill Ancient Wars to not die to it. Assuming we don't die to an all-out attack. Conant sends in a bunch of stuff. Life's Origin stays back. So yeah, we have to be careful with the timing. Because they can use Life's Origin to get back Ancient Wars. But once the trigger goes on the stack, it's too late, and if I kill it, they can bring it back before the end step and still trigger it. So, don't know if there's a way out. Take four. One to our opponents. I guess I can uh, 
deal one elsewhere too. Kill a shrine token. But our opponent still has one, two, three, four, five shrines. Arcane signets. Okay. And they're gonna bring back companion. Awesome. So now they can't save the uh, ancient wars anymore. So we're not dead to the trigger, and we get to untap and finish him off with our dragons. Assuming companion doesn't draw anything relevant. Just a land. Oof. Close game. Thought we were dead for a second after that Teferi's Protection, which was an incredibly lucky top deck, but we got there. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our red-black Rivas Dragons deck in action. And if you get to untap with Rivas, you get to do some fun things, but also in the more grindy matchups, just discarding some of your dragons to get them back from the graveyard over and over again can be a lot of fun. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.